Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast where not even we can play that many games at once, because this week we watched Ghost Lot. Written by Mark Platt. Directed by Alan Waring. And aired in October of 1989. Yeah. So, uh, very confusing. <laughs> Apparently, Mark Platt had been trying to write for the show for a while, uh, ever since Bob Holmes was script <laughs> editor, actually, a while, and, uh... Andrew Cartmel found out, liked his stuff, and was like, yeah, you can come write a, come write a seal for us. And he wrote this. <laughs> Actually, he didn't write this first. He wrote a story called Lung Bearer that he turned into a novel later, which I've heard is interesting because it's basically about the doctor being on Gallifrey battling with his cousins to get some sort of thing out of someone's will. Wow, that sounds a lot more concrete than this was. <laughs> and um, <laughs> J&T was like, I think it reveals too much about the Doctor too quickly, so he reworked it into this. Which reveals too much about Ace too quickly. <laughs> okay, well, not okay, really. So not even really. better, I found out very, very slight spoiler for next week, and by that I mean it's not a spoiler at all. Apparently next week's serial, Ace mentions the house she burned down because these serials were originally switched in airing order. But then they switched them because JNT wanted to air Curse of Fenric around Halloween. So Ace's reference in the next story to the house she burned down was supposed to lead into this story, but now it's just after this story. Well, that's okay. I mean. Yeah, just because yeah. they aired in that order doesn't mean it happened in that order. And I mean, doesn't like make it. It, it <laughs> didn't really feel out of nowhere that she burned the house down because it kind of leads up to it with her like lying or and like not telling the whole truth about it. Yeah. So, yeah. Also seems like something Ace would do, you know, given her, <laughs> her background in, uh, in explosives. Potential domestic terrorism. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so it begins... Oh, it begins with those people leaving the house or going to yeah, bed the, or the, um, something. Yeah, the maids. They're like, this is a pretty creepy place. I can't believe we work here. <laughs> Sucks to be us. <laughs> <laughs> would hate to be here after dark so that already so sets up like hey nothing bad happens during the day but once nightfall comes you know better look out yeah and the doctor and ace land i think the dialogue seems to imply that the doctor is teaching ace how to pilot the tardis um, i didn't i don't remember any of the dialogue from that scene so whatever the doctor's talking about hey ace did it work did you land it and he's, she's like yeah i think we landed and he's like okay go check where we are make sure we haven't like landed in the ocean or something so he goes outside and they're facing the wall and then ace is like you're still a terrible parker doctor <laughs> professor he's all well who cares about parking <laughs> And they leave the TARDIS. We don't get to see the inside of the TARDIS either. Uh, like we said last week, after they discarded the set on accident, they, I guess they just opted to never show it again. Well, it's okay. There's only, what, seven more episodes left, so... Yeah. <laughs> Coming rapidly to wow. the end. But they didn't know. See, that was the thing. They didn't know it was the end till after the season aired. Pretty sure most people who worked on the show and most fans of the show could tell that it was coming to a close sometime soon. I mean, soon, but they didn't know it would be this season. I read, um, um I actually just coincidentally saw this on Twitter, I think, um, some magazine clipping from like the late 80s that, <laughs> that like vehemently um, like asserted like, Doctor Who's not ending, guys. Yeah, all the people who think it's ending after season 26, you're wrong. And here's why. And it gave all these like reasons. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, they didn't actually know. Uh, the reason why it ended up ending was because they're like, oh, we'll go on hiatus for a while. And then Andrew Cartmel was like, well, since my future in the show is in doubt now, since we don't know if it's coming back, I'm going to take this other job until it comes back. And then J&T was like, yeah, I'm done with the show. I've done this for, like, eight damn seasons. <laughs> um, so after he left as well, it was kind of done. Like we said before, he was kind of at one point the only person keeping the show alive. Whether or not he wanted to do that or not. <laughs> up keeping it barely alive. It's on life support. <laughs> it's like dying in the bed and JT's all, no, not yet. Um, so they're in a Victorian mansion. And the whole serial takes place in this mansion. Yeah. Um, which was kind of nice, actually. 
Yeah, the, for sets, whatever reason. the sets weren't that bad. Uh, pretty good, actually. Were they the actually house, sets, or I were they... I thought they were sets, but they might not be, I suppose. I really don't know. <laughs> Neither do I. I just assumed. I guess I can look on that Doctor Who locations website. <laughs> <laughs> that one that That's revealed the quarry from <laughs> Greatest Show in the Galaxy is closing? Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Save the quarry. <laughs> oh, no. It's closing this year. <laughs> I feel like there's other more important quarries to Doctor Who history than uh, than that one. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like I, that I one for uh, Hand of Fear, you know? That <laughs> seems pretty important. That was yeah. that time the rock quarry actually played a rock quarry, wasn't it? I feel like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the one time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but apparently it is in, like, south england or something so uh yeah looks nothing like a quarry it looks more like a desert <laughs> i don't know why i never thought of this but how do you think they get to these rock quarries do you think like just drive do you think they all pile into like a van and then just Probably. bust the entire production crew down in a couple vans or do they yeah do think they drive themselves or stretch limos <laughs> stretch limo. <laughs> that's where they're blowing the budget <laughs> no wonder the sets look so garbage <clears throat> I think you mean Hummer stretch limos. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go over those rocks and those rock quarries. So. Also gotta go all over those environmental protection <laughs> laws. <laughs> <laughs> you think they had environmental protection laws in the 80s? Actually, they probably did now that I think about it. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, Doctor and Ace are in this house and the Doctor's like implied that he has a surprise for Ace and Ace is like, what's the surprise, Doctor? And he's like, you'll see. You'll find out very soon. And Ace is like, hmm, I don't like this. The doc's like, you shouldn't. <laughs> and, um, oh, we actually didn't mention the, um, or no, I guess they meet him now. Yeah, because they find the, uh, they find the, like, um, card on the floor that says RFE on it. Yeah, like, or RFC. Or, <clears throat> oh, yeah, RFC. RFC. And they're like, what does that stand for? And they're like, hmm. And Ace is like, could it be this? And the doctor's like, I don't know. I think the doctor was like, that wasn't founded for another 50 years, Ace. And she's like, oh. Well, it was, yeah, 1912 or whatever it was. I don't even remember what it was. The Royal something or, or Royal the other. Royal Fighting Club. <laughs> First rule royal of the Royal Fight Fighting Club. Club is you don't talk about the Royal Fighting Club. Um, yeah, this serial takes place in 1883, I think. Yeah. So like near, nearing the end of the Victorian Queen Victoria's era. Um, Queen. Yeah, which plays into what happens later. <laughs> Um, but what's whatever it was that they were talking about wasn't founded until nineteen like twelve. So yeah. Anyway, this guy shows up, and uh, it's red. F- it's Redford Fen Cooper. I think that was his name. Yeah, something like that. Something He's Fen like, Cooper. Hey, what's up, guys? I have this spear. And they're like, what? <laughs> yeah, he's uh, apparently his name was ripped directly from the author of Lost of the Mohicans, at least the last name anyway, Fen Cooper. Oh yeah, on. Fen Cooper. So. Yeah, he's looking for he's looking for Redford Fen Cooper, and they're like, "What?" Yeah, and for once in the show's history, when they go to the Victorian period, <laughs> the Victorian characters actually comment um, on their clothes. He's like, "Wow, Ace is practically naked because she has her um, like shoulders showing." Oh there. yeah, um, and that comes up a lot. It's a faux pas in Victorian England. Um, and there's, well, the doctor passes it off. Um, obviously, I guess in like terms this guy would understand. He's like, oh yeah, she's from a less civilized climb. And at first I thought he said time, but no, he, sa- he says climb. And I guess it's like that idea. Um, I think this, I think Montesquieu came up with this, but like obviously it was like a major public sentiment or whatever that mm-hmm. um, uh, climate like determines, um, well, they would say how civilized a society is, but maybe... Um, also how technologically advanced it is, um, which is also kind of like a loaded term, but hey, yeah. wh- whatever, <laughs> um, which is obviously now we know isn't true, but yeah. No. Um, but yeah, and just Fen Cooper's like, okay, uh, sure. Come with me, guys. Oh, yeah, the doctor pawns off his uh, umbrella and hat to Nimrod, who I think yeah. also shows up right now. And then the doctor goes the rest of the serial without his hat, which was really weird. Well, wasn't weird. used to seeing him without his hat on. 
Uh, yeah, I guess it was kind of weird. It wasn't really weird. It's well, just he doesn't have his hat on. I mean, he's got his umbrella weird. also, which was kind of weird because he's actually been doing things with that umbrella and was like, where's your umbrella, buddy? Yeah, instead he uses guns, which he just <laughs> said in, in the previous serial that he didn't use. <laughs> he doesn't use the gun. Um, doesn't pull yeah. the trigger. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. I, he wields it. <laughs> I was, okay, we'll get there. I, yeah, okay. So the doctor much is, like Cooper does right now. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> Cooper just pulls his gun on the doctor and Ace, and uh, they're like, "Cooper, what are you doing?" Cooper, and Coop. He, <laughs> Coop, old buddy, and uh, he's <laughs> Coop, old chap. <laughs> he uh, obviously has like PTSD or something um, from his expeditions into the uh, basement, <laughs> the basement, and like Central Africa or wherever he explored. Um, but yeah. the doctor pulls back a curtain and he, he looks into a window and he's like, hey, it's Cooper. And they're like, wow, it's <laughs> you. You dissociated your own identity or whatever. Um, yeah. And he's like, what if they turned to you, old chap? They really pulled a number on you. And then some other people come in. Uh, well, there's also Pritchard. these scenes of um, the, the, uh, the father is talking with um, – Oh yeah, Gwendolyn. George, George, and Gwendolyn are like talking, talking and about like, someone named Josiah. Yeah, George is looking for the master of the house. He's like, "Where's Josiah?" And Gwendolyn's like, "He'll be right out." And um, and there's Nimrod. There more, yeah, Nimrod. The doctor reveals that Nimrod is a Neanderthal, which at first I thought was just a de- derogatory term for Nimrod, but then you find out later he's actually, like, of the species Neanderthal. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I think that's everyone, and you don't find control and light until later. Um, yeah, or they don't, they're not, like, unleashed until later. Well, we keep seeing these scenes of uh, someone peeking an eye through a hole, and they're like, come here, open the door, come here, and you're like, what's going on? <laughs> Yeah, that was a uh, control, I guess, looking back. Yeah. yeah. So Pritchard and her posse lead Cooper away, and uh, they go straight back at him. They put him in a room, and they're like, don't come out. Yeah, so the Doctor and Ace then go into this room, and George mistakes doc- the Doctor for Josiah Smith, and he's like, yes, well, now maybe you can... Actually, I think he mistakes him for Darwin, because now he's like, now you can finally tell me about this fantastic theory of evolution you have. The Doctor's like, uh, yeah, that's my theory, <laughs> definitely. And then he sends Ace off with uh, Gwendolyn. Yeah, I guess um, George just comes to talk to Josiah to sort of like dispute all his theories and stuff because yeah. he's a reverend so <clears throat> yeah and um then yeah, a- so th- ace and gwendolyn come back dressed in man's clothes and they're like what are you doing you're not a man and it was ace's idea um they originally go off so that to clothe ace and something more victorian um which i guess does actually happen later yeah but for now she looks like a butler <laughs> <laughs> they just have spare butler outfits i mean didn't you notice they only had maids in this house and <laughs> nimrod was the only butler yeah so. um so i think josiah also shows up um yeah, he, he confronts shows up the now, doctor i think yeah he um creepily wears these like um mini round shades I forgot what those are called but yeah spectacles yeah well i don't know there's like a more specific term for them or something but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the doctor thinks something mighty suspicious is going on because of Fen Cooper's whole freak out when he saw his reflection. Because he tells Ace um, earlier, actually, he tells Ace that he thinks Fen Cooper's seen something so fantastic that his mind couldn't comprehend it. So his mind just broke. <clears throat> yeah, and he also sort of somehow knows that Josiah is an alien. An alien. Which I guess Ace also does too, because she detects Josiah's and Light's alien presence a hundred years in the future. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think right now is this is when Ace figures out that this is um, what's the name of the Paravale. house? <laughs> what? Um, it, it is. It's it's her hometown, Paravale, hundred years in the past. Yes, but the name of the house it was uh, well, something the Chase. The house. the house was named British something houses. Chase. Name their houses. Why not? Oh, Gabriel Chase. That's the name of the house. Gabriel Chase. 
Why not name houses? Exactly. Yeah, I guess why not? It's just kind of weird, though. My house is named George. I just After named... Reverend George? Yes. I guess I'll name mine Josiah then. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is when it's revealed in Ace is like, you tricked me, Doctor. And the Doctor's like, I think you should face your fears, Ace. And yeah. Ace is like... Makes a lot more sense in the light of... Uh, <laughs> Her mentioning it in the yeah. next serial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the doc's like, I think you need to face your fears. And Ace is like, I don't need to face my fears, Doctor. The doc's like, well, I guess you could wait in the TARDIS. And Ace is like, no, actually, <laughs> just kidding. I do need to face my fears. The doc's like, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, I don't know if she reveals this much now, but um, maybe we should. She and one of her best friends when she was a kid... Um, used to dare each other. Yeah. So she went into this house on a dare and got freaked out by something inside of it. And I think yeah. that's all we learn at this point. Yeah, because well, we don't learn it. We don't learn that the house's ultimate fate till later when they chuck that invitation to Queen Victoria's gala into the fire. I, I think maybe right now we also learn that her friend was um, killed. Yeah, killed by the house. racists. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, kind of makes that whole thing she said lost cereal also a little bit weird. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh. Um, the Doctor and Ace get separated. I th oh, yeah. Ace run. No, okay. Ace doesn't run off. The Doctor is like, okay, follow me, Ace. Um, Ace is like, no, no, no. And uh, she's, she goes down into the basement where she finds this stone spaceship. Yeah. With that these... Nimrod has been worshipping. Yeah. We find out at some point. And it's got these... Uh... <laughs> I was trying to think of a way to describe them, and all I thought Cylinders. of was the, the Monoptera and the Zarbi. What? <laughs> oh, the... <laughs> the aliens on the ship oh. who were the insect aliens. <clears throat> um, yeah, they're humanoid from the neck down. Um, but their heads look like bugs, which um, Josiah has been researching uh, moths. Um, yeah. He... I think it's maybe? implied that Josiah is one of those creatures, too. He just changed himself to look like a... Yeah, he's trying to change into a human. Um, and that's like what that thing is later where he finally like molts yeah. and becomes a human. Um, but yeah, there was that... I'm trying to think. Maybe Josiah is actually is an actual like historical figure because there was that guy who uh, like researched the moths in England and during the Industrial Revolution and found out that the ones that um, changed or not changed but the like soot colored moths yeah. survived more than like the brightly colored ones. Yeah, Whereas because before all the trees was, got covered in soot, so yeah. the ones they could blend in. I think um, or that just, is a real person, but I don't think that person was Josiah because from what I read, Josiah was a character made up for this serial specifically. Yeah. I guess in this universe, he's the one who came up with that. <laughs> why not? I mean, yeah, they discovered not? Atlantis three times. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Doctor and Ace, well, yeah, so they get separated and Ace is in the basement and she starts freaking out because these freaking bug people <laughs> chasing her. And uh, that's how the serial ends. Yeah, that's the how the episode, serial, that's how the serial <laughs> episode ends. ends. That's how my breakfast ended. Uh, <laughs> I ate cereal. Bug people for chasing you. Yeah, uh, it was pretty bad. So anyway, it's a low <laughs> cholesterol breakfast compared to what Ace eats, but a high sugar one compared what to what Ace eats. Eat? Um, later, she eats breakfast in bed with like three eggs, butter toast, <laughs> Don't and like, make me uh, ham actually and bacon. Most of that. Yeah, probably. Breakfast. <laughs> well, she's the one who mentions it's high cholesterol. <laughs> I mean, it is, but yeah. So Nimrod comes in. Well, she is a she's a very active lifestyle, running away <laughs> from monsters and helping the Doctor blow things up. So I think she can get away with it. <clears throat> Nimrod comes in with this uh, light. Uh, Starts worshipping him. <laughs> no. <laughs> Starts trying to scare the monsters away, but then control like mentally blows up the light or it goes out or i, I wasn't don't know certain. the the bug guys say some stuff but i couldn't understand their voices no, at all might have been important to understanding actually what the heck happened in this serial <laughs> no, and like no just nobody knows because <laughs> nobody, they, knows nobody can understand the bugs <laughs> <laughs> kind of like in um, what's that metamorphosis where he's trying to talk but nobody can understand him? Must be a reference. No, 
<laughs> or District 9. <laughs> or um, what's that new movie where the aliens who show up and nobody can understand oh, them because they're well. aliens? I think it's Arrival. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, Arrival. That was a good movie, though, actually. It looks pretty bad. <laughs> it was I think really, I watched it's like my fa- it was 10 my favorite seconds movie of a trailer. 2016. Wow, you have a favorite movie of the year? Yeah. I never have a favorite thing of the year because it's just it's just arbitrary. It's just, just have a favorite day of the year. It's my birthday. Yeah, so you do have a favorite thing of the year. But it's not like my birth. <laughs> your birthday is something that comes around like once a year. The favorite movie of the year thing is like completely arbitrary, like what year the movie was released guess, and ranking yeah. it against other movies released that year when you could just rank it against every movie ever and have a favorite movie ever, which but I makes do have more a favorite sense. Movie ever. Same. But I have nothing after the favorite movie ever. I mean, I don't have a ranking after the favorite movie ever. It's, it's good, because rankings are also pretty arbitrary. <laughs> as I always mention. Yes, as you always bring up. <clears throat> so, Ace and Nimrod, the light goes out and they, the bugs open the door and like control out and they're like, oh no. And the doctor busts in and he's like, what's going on down here? And nobody's there like, I don't know. Nobody <laughs> knows what's happening. So the doctor's like, great. Uh, so they leave the basement in the elevator. Yeah. I guess they have an elevator. <laughs> and uh, they lock down th- the elevator. I was thinking maybe it was a dumb waiter, but no, it's, a, it's an actual legit elevator. <laughs> that only goes to the basement from the first floor. Did they have elevators in 1883? <laughs> <laughs> They do now. <laughs> they do in this serial. Well, this guy's from space, so maybe he built it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the spaceship in the basement is actually stone. Just kind of weird. I feel like stone would be something really bad to make your spaceship out of. Yeah, but uh, maybe they didn't have anything else. Yeah, actually kind of reminiscent of last week, actually, with the spaceship <laughs> underneath the, the, the lake. The lake. Weird. Um, Maybe Andrew Cartmel just writes the same story every week and slaps a different name <laughs> on it. And then again, it's not that um, original of a, an idea, you know, a, a underground spaceship. So yeah, we're just finding patterns where there probably aren't really any patterns. <clears throat> Which humans are surprisingly good at, by the way. So... Uh, <laughs> um, I think... <laughs> At this point, Ace goes to sleep because she wakes up, and that's when they serve her breakfast in bed. Yeah, but or, she she so it's like nightfall, and Josiah's like, "Oh, oh, oh it's nightfall, finally!" Or, "Oh, I guess it's always been night." I honestly don't know what happens. I think next. it's uh, uh, geez. I think it's still nighttime, and I think Ace is kind of so the doctor's trying to figure like get out of Ace what the heck she discovered in the house in a hundred years time. And I think she just falls asleep, and the doc's like, hmm. All right. Oh, yeah, we forgot to mention they discovered a uh, frozen body of a policeman at oh, some yeah, point. Oh, yeah, in a drawer. They just one. <laughs> open the drawer, and they're like, I'm just going to close this up again. <laughs> pretend I never saw this. It's like, you do you, buddy. <laughs> they also found one full of uh, dead bugs. Yeah, that's later, but, yeah, I guess it exists at this point. So um, I think, actually, we cut right now to Josiah and George discussing and George is like evolution is a load of crock <laughs> and George is like mm, uh, not George Josiah he's all mm. yeah so I think you're going to be going to uh, watch him call it he kept referencing these sending Java. people ja- to Java <laughs> but I guess going to Java is just dying or becoming <laughs> incapacitated because the police officer also went to Java or maybe he gives him an all-expenses-paid trip to Java, and he's actually a pretty good guy. He's just sending all these servants to Java. You were just totally misinterpreted everything he was doing in this serial. Yeah, well, considering the dead father went off to Java, it's probably not too likely. But maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe he is. I don't even know where Java is. I think it's in the South Pacific somewhere. I think it's an island. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an island, but... <laughs> Was like somewhere in Southeast Asia. I really don't know. Mm-hmm. There's a coffee place near here called Java City. <laughs> yeah, that's where he's sending them. <laughs> They're going on coffee runs. He's just running out of coffee constantly because <laughs> he needs the coffee to survive. So that's why he wants to take over England oh. to supply coffee to everyone clearly because clearly Victoria yeah, is doing her job. Because clearly England was the supreme supplier of coffee and not tea in 1883. Yep. <laughs> yep. 
So the doctor uh, wakes up the policeman. The policeman's been asleep for two years. Oh, yeah, Ace wakes up and the maid's like, you've been asleep. It's five o'clock right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Ace is like, oh, <laughs> what the? <laughs> so she busts in to the, see the doctor and policeman just chatting away. And they're like, so uh, we're trying to figure out what's going on here. I don't actually know the why the doctor woke like up that policeman. English breakfast. <laughs> Um, probably because he was hypnotized into sleeping for two years, and that's probably a pretty bad thing, so. Yeah, I mean, he just ends up getting killed. Yeah, Which is but, probably worse. I mean, maybe. <laughs> At least if you're hypnotized to sleep for two years, you're still alive. Uh, sure. <laughs> so, um, and then... I feel like we're skipping a lot of the events of episode two, <laughs> well, to be honest. If you remember any of them, be my guest to, uh... Well, I mean, not really, but <laughs> we're still skipping them. I think we're still only like five minutes into episode two explaining what happened. Just waking know. up a policeman was like the first thing the doctor did in that episode. I don't know. Well, if I go running around now, uh, <laughs> George, no, Fen Cooper escapes from the straitjacket. And yeah, Nimrod goes to um, <coughs> free him. Yeah, and then he's like, the um, doctor's already because, freed me. Because Nimrod somehow finds out that Cooper um, has interacted with the light that he used to worship when he was in his own time period. Yes. Um, and then <laughs> Cooper's like, well, I've been freed for hours. So they yeah, go the off. the doctor freed me. <laughs> he's like, oh, what? So they go off to uh, some... Where? Yeah. What you find out later is, I think, to free light. Is this when that scene with the gun happens? Um, when they pull it, the guy pulls the gun on the doctor, and then I think like all the maids pull the gun on the doctor, and yeah, that's pretty soon. I think there's the scene with um, Josiah molting like yeah. Gwendolyn and Pritchard go into a trance. We didn't mention that Gwendolyn is Pritchard's daughter, so <laughs> Gwendolyn Pritchard, I guess. Um, they like go into a trance, um, and Josiah finally like evolves into a human humanoid <clears throat> completely. Um, and I thought that, um, the aliens slash Josiah's buddies had replaced Gwendolyn and Mrs. Pritchard, but no, apparently they were just hypnotized. Oh, I was going to say, turns out they're just totally in on this alien taking <laughs> over England. <laughs> I mean... They are in their hypnotized state. Yeah, but to be fair, like, we've had people, villains on the show, who are just totally down with letting aliens invade. Like, yeah. that time those people tried to blow up the Earth in invasion of the dinosaurs because they thought it would, they could make a better Earth. That time Mikey Yates betrayed everyone. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, or that time when Light decided to return everything to a uh, city of death. Soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was actually... Um, Kind of funny hearing Reverend George like, you think we all came from primordial soup? <laughs> and then you remember City of Death and you're like, huh. <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, George gets turned into a painting of him <laughs> looking very monkey-like and eating a banana. Oh, yeah, because he's like, you think I came from a monkey? And then jo uh, Josiah's, Josiah's like, is... well, he gets like chloroformed. <laughs> He turns him into a monkey. Apparently, Josiah a painting can do that. of a monkey. Um, <clears throat> it's and, not a monkey. It's just a painting of a monkey. And then I think this is when Josiah pulls the gun on the doctor. Yeah. And then the doctor whoop to whops him and pulls the <laughs> pulls the gun on him. Yeah. Apparently, Josiah has like a posse of badass maids who all carry guns. Was that actually was that now? Was that in episode three? No, I'm pretty sure it's now. It's before Light shows up, which was is like the though? end of two. Yeah, it is. So the doctor makes Josiah take him down into the basement. Yes, that's what happens, right? Yeah, I vaguely remember them going down into the basement at some point again <laughs> and playing with those... Knobs. <laughs> yeah, those cylinder things. Um, and Josiah, well, the doctor's figured out at this point Thankfully, because I didn't know what was going on. The doctor's figured out and tells Ace that there's a force in the ship that Josiah doesn't want awakened. 
Yes. And that's pretty much a summary of everything that's happened so far, which yes. is nice. It's nice that they dropped that piece of information because otherwise I wouldn't have known what the heck was going on. Doesn't matter because the next episode and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so Josiah pulls the gun on the doctor. And this is what I was mentioning earlier. What I thought was going to happen was the doctor was just going to stand because they were like messing with Josiah because the doctor was. Oh, yeah, because they were like. Um, the doctor was talking to Ace. Is like, okay, when I do blah blah blah, you should do it too. And then the doctor was like, you should shoot She's me like, now, great. Josiah. And I really thought what was going to happen was it was going to be with, was Josiah was going to pull the trigger and it was going to be revealed that the doctor had removed all the bullets when he had stolen the gun and he was totally <laughs> bluffing when he was <laughs> leading Josiah into the basement. But they didn't do that. So, well, Ace does try and bluff their way out of it by using the um, radio, radi, the Geiger thing, <laughs> the Geiger counter. Um, and Josiah's like, I know what that is. It's not a gun, so just stop. And Ace is like, oh, dang it. And Ace is like, wait, how do you know? <laughs> and he's like, because I'm an alien. It's, not like, alien. it's not like aliens have Geiger counters in, from Earth in the future. It's also not like aliens say that they're aliens menacingly, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you think. <laughs> but the Daleks like to run around saying they're the Daleks a lot. Yeah, but they don't say they're aliens because they're not aliens to them. To them, the humans are the aliens slash everyone else is the aliens. But they like saying they're Daleks. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> so uh, the Doctor and Ace blow up this thing that releases light, both the character yeah. and literal light, the concept. Yeah, they're... <laughs> they're um, it's not really a concept. It's more of just a thing. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, the this actually, I don't know how, um, but apparently there's something we missed because the doctor is not in the basement anymore when light gets released. He's up above. He's like near the elevator. Don't they leave? They go back up through the elevator and the doctor breaks the elevator because in episode three, he, fi- he reveals to Ace that he fixed the elevator and Ace is like, why would you do that? And he's like, because I wanted to let light out. Yeah, but when the actually, light... Actually, that's the end of episode two because they, Jesus, they leave and they fix the elevator and light... Yeah, that's when White uses the elevator. Yeah, because the doctor fixes it. Even though he can teleport. I'm kind of certain now that the gun scene happens after Light. Or no. No, it doesn't. Hmm. Because that's before they even went down. Anyway, yeah, the doc- well, the Doctor and Ace let Light out and they go up the elevator. And then at the end of episode two, the Doctor fixes the elevator because he breaks it when they come up the first time. He fixes the elevator and Light comes out and just says, like, no, don't let it out. And it zaps him. That kind of nifty <laughs> special effect. Yeah, the only special effect in the serial pretty much except for all the things with Light. Well, kinda. yeah, besides that formula thing on the gloss when oh, Light was looking yeah, at the... that was kind of cool. <clears throat> Um, so this is where things really start to go off the deep end, if they as hadn't if they, already. As if they hadn't already. Um, well, it was semi-followable up until now. Um, <laughs> well, get just, ready, because <laughs> here we go. Not that it was bad. I didn't dislike any of this serial. Um, it's actually my favorite Seventh Doctor serial so far. I still like Greatest Show in the Galaxy better. <laughs> Why? Because like it was second. the greatest show in the galaxy? No. Oh. <laughs> well, okay then. <laughs> yeah, I liked the I, I liked Greatest Show in the Galaxy better for its musical interludes. If this had some <laughs> songs in it, you know, this would be this would definitely be the best. But uh, I still do think it's a slightly better, but slightly more enjoyable. But yeah, that's fair. Anyway, um, so Light looks like an angel. Yeah, he's assumed a new form, which explains why Nimrod worshipped him when in his time because he looks like an angel. Looks like a divine being. Well, I mean, I guess so, but there's also, you know, the Neanderthals lived before, like, what we think of now as angels, which comes from, like, the, um, you know, Bible. Bible slash... I mean, yeah, but, I mean, if, like, if just some dude showed up... Yeah, I mean, they'd probably really... worship him, but I don't think they'd say, like, oh, this guy looks like an angel, because that wasn't yeah. really a thing yet. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, or maybe it was. Um, maybe. Maybe light is the inspiration for the Bible, for the book of angels in the Bible. Yeah, maybe. There's there's like, well, I mean, you can watch on History Channel and stuff, like ancient aliens, like, yeah, the, the angels in the Bible were actually uh, aliens. aliens. Um, which, you know, people always make fun of it. There's like that meme guy with the crazy hair 
Um, but you know, I don't, I, I don't necessarily believe it, but I don't want to discount it either. Like, you know, maybe, I don't know. Obviously I'm not religious, so <laughs> I'm going to stay away from that topic. <clears throat> so yeah, light comes out and is like, what's going on here? Who released me? The doc's like, that would be me. And light's like, okay, oh, dang thanks it. buddy. <laughs> And then Control's, like, running around mucking things up. And she's like... <laughs> <laughs> At first, Light's like, oh, man, this can't be Earth. Everything's so different. And they're like, yeah, that's what happens. Things change and things evolve. And then and they're Light's like, yeah, like, it's oh, 1883. <laughs> and Light's like, oh, no. no this isn't okay. No this change. This is not okay. <laughs> change doesn't happen on my watch <laughs> looks like I'm gonna have to revert all the changes revert to saved version <laughs> um, revert the simulation <laughs> and uh but not before teleporting around and having a lot of weird dialogue with people and killing people <laughs> cause he decides to just kill a maid he decides to kill some people cause he thinks by killing people he'll halt the flow of evolution also he wanted to find out how the maid works so he did dissects that one maid which was kind of gruesome cause he just turns around and he's like holding her arm in his hand he's like whoa <laughs> yeah but the arm looks really unrealistic I mean yeah but you could like they went through <laughs> she the, just had it like spraying blood all over the place <laughs> <laughs> well, they like went through the effort of paying attention to detail and having the body on the table have this lopped off at the shoulder <laughs> and you could see this I mean it looked it's obviously faked arm. but there was this just red splotch there where it had been chopped off and was like okay <laughs> um, so this at this point Josiah um, reveals he reveals it at first like kind of subtly with this picture who if you don't know that that's Queen, Queen Victoria then I guess you're not going to pick up on it but then they reveal it like for sure later in the dialogue but he reveals um, that he's planning to kill Queen Victoria um, to take over England and reinstitute well, it. He's got Fen Cooper on it. Yeah. <laughs> Fen, Fen Cooper's like, I'm looking for this dangerous beast. And he pulls out this yeah, picture, this picture, of, picture of, Queen of Queen Victoria with like a crosshair on it. <laughs> the doctor's like, um... And then Fen Cooper's like, well, you join me on my quest. The doctor's like, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense um, if you think about light as like no 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 we can't have any evolution and then um what's his face josiah is like he's the opposite right he's like the yeah. radical evolution so the radical I evolutionist think, i i think i'm not 100 percent sure on this so don't take this as fact but i'm pretty sure victoria had no um heirs right so i believe so so and after that was like the edwardian period who i'm guessing wasn't like the direct um, son of Victoria. No, so I don't think so. There, I guess there was sort of like this stagnant feeling or whatever. Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just trying to make this connection where again, there might not be one, but like, like, oh yeah, there's a stagnation in the line or whatever. So Josiah, who represents the radical evolution again, maybe is like, "Hey, we got to change this. You know, got to take over England. Got to kill Queen Victoria, and I think he make just everything wants to take evolve." Over the world. Yeah, I there's that too. Takes, there's that too. I think he just wants to take over the world. Um, also, might help well, if we knew British history. To know. Yeah, it might help. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just trying to make some sense of this because it didn't really make much sense. So, yeah. <clears throat> I don't really know what Control's point was. I feel like she was like the control. Like my wow, like well, like the control. Like she controlled light was what I thought originally, but then it's revealed that light does his own thing. as a strong, independent light being who doesn't need no control. Um, yeah, so. I think she because because what light was doing was that he was surveying things <laughs> in like prehistoric times. Um. But now Prehistoric things, for us, but his regular time for him. I don't think he was And a for time. Nimrod. Well, well he was was Nimrod's regular time. Yeah, he was well, he was surveying things at the time that Nimrod was yeah. originally born. Yeah, prehistoric for us, not for light. That was just light's regular time. Yeah, why would I why would I be talking in terms of him and not myself? You said prehistoric times. Yeah. For <laughs> us. Like it's yeah. pretty obvious. It's not it wasn't really that obvious. <laughs> anyway. Um that's what he was doing. 
So maybe control was like the the control, the one that controlled him into not intervening and just surveying. See, that's what I thought. But control is definitely a contemporary and, English woman and not a Neanderthal like Nimrod. Um, but maybe she um, decided not to do that anymore. Because was she a human? Well, she wasn't a Neanderthal. Well, yeah, she wasn't a Neanderthal. But was she? I don't know if she was a human. I don't, I don't really know. know what she was, but she wants to fit into the Victorian society. So that might be important. But she I falls in love with Fen Cooper. She does? I didn't get that at all. Or the other way around. Fen Cooper falls in love with her, something I, like that. I, I totally didn't get any romantic That's 100% what this. I got from Fen Cooper deciding to give her the invitation to Queen Victoria's thing rather than Josiah. I didn't get that at all. That's 100% what I got. <laughs> All right. Sure. Well, they have all the time in the world to do that now that they're on that spaceship. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so they start having dinner. Oh, we didn't mention, I think we didn't mention, maybe I mentioned it, that, uh, well, Mackenzie dies. So does La- Gwendolyn. Later. Well, Gwendolyn That's dies, later. But what I was really going to mention about Mackenzie was that he eats like four English breakfasts. You said that already. Oh, dang it. <laughs> you said well, that right when we mentioned well, that he woke up. There's no point not mentioning it again because it was a interesting part of the serial. Of all the interesting things that happened in the serial, I'm going to say that was probably the least interesting of all the interesting things. Doesn't mean it's not interesting. <laughs> it's just the least interesting of all the interesting things. Uh, well, that's like your opinion, man. Yeah, it is. Never said it was anything but. <clears throat> so they have dinner, and uh, the doctor makes this oblique, ref- oblique statement to Ace, don't try the soup. And Ace is like, what? Because it's actually... Primordial <laughs> soup. No, I'm pretty sure it's actually just soup. Darn. <laughs> I mean, maybe it was, maybe, maybe he like vaporized, not vaporized, maybe he supified the people he killed and just, they're, ser- they're, they're serving this human stew at dinner. I don't know. Maybe it was real human stew that the production team made and forced the actor who played light to eat. Maybe humans were harmed in the making of this program. You think the BBC has the budget for that? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind the ethical and moral parts. No. You they think they have the budget to kill people? <laughs> That's a lot of lawyer's fees and got to hire an assassin. It's a they lot have, of money. They have, they have the candy man. They created the candy man. The candy man died at the end of that serial. <laughs> you think they have the budget to bring him back? No. <laughs> so they were eating... Dinner and uh, and the doctor's like, so when are you guys gonna kill Queen Victoria? <laughs> and Ben Coop is like, what? <laughs> it's like, don't worry, I figured it out. You can just tell me. Oh yeah, the doctor dehypnotizes. I think this is actually right after this. The doctor dehypnotizes Gwendolyn and Pritchard. It doesn't matter because um, they die by showing them pictures of themselves. Yeah. And, then, and then light kills them by <laughs> turning them into stone. He's like, no, 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 no more change. Going to turn you into stone because stone definitely can't change. No, don't me- forget the rock cycle, you know. <laughs> that doesn't exist. Yeah, the doctor should have just rocked Light's world and told him about the rock cycle. <laughs> well, that, he kind of does that later. He defeats Light by mentioning, like, you change Light, which is kind of a dumb cop-out way to defeat him. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> but um, so Fen Cooper gives this invitation to Queen Victoria's Ball to... To control, Josiah was banking on Fen Cooper giving them this invitation to Queen Victoria's ball so they could go together, and that was like what hinged his entire plan. So he was kind of defeated immediately as soon as Fen Cooper was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna take control." Um, so Josiah tries to snatch it back, and controls it. like, "If I can't have it, nobody can." So she throws it into the fire, which causes Ace to like break down. Well, Ace is like Ace was the one who freed Control from being. That, under control. That, Maybe yeah. she was the one who was under control. I'm not sure. <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah, Issa's like, you tell Josiah what's going on now. And she like lays down this verbal slap on Josiah. And Josiah's like, okay, I mean, I never cared about control. So uh. <laughs> Josiah's like, I hate to break it to you guys, but I never cared about any of this, okay? I was just doing this in my spare time. I was using all of you to get to Queen Victoria. Um, but then Ace, I think, reveals to the doctor that she was the one who burned down the mansion, which is why it's a deserted, burned out mansion 100 years from now. <laughs> and the doctor's like... Should have probably seen that coming. <laughs> probably should have figured that out. <clears throat> but um, Doc's like, okay, well, uh, that's good to know. Cool. <laughs> and then he goes... And yeah, they kind of... Yeah, I don't know. Josiah... Josiah gets captured. They capture Josiah, take him down to the ship. And the doctor goes down. And basically just brutally executes Light, sort of. Kind of blows his mind. I guess Light kind of commits suicide. Maybe. I don't know, well, actually. Light um, tells the doctor that he's not cool with things changing and he's just going to destroy everything because if things keep changing, he can't handle it. So he's like, I'm going to revert everything to primordial soup. <laughs> um, and the doctor's like, well, you changed too, Light. Haven't you just changed location in the past several minutes? Hasn't your, wow. mi hasn't your mindset changed in the past several minutes? And Light's like, you know what? You're right. I can't handle that. So... <laughs> I'm gonna blow myself up. Light's pretty freaking overpowered. He's like ambassadors of death level overpowered here. Yeah. He just zap people, turn them to stone, wipe the entire planet to primordial soup. Yeah, he's actually more overpowered than the ambassadors of death, <laughs> considering he can also teleport. <laughs> he moves at the speed of thought. You know, I really thought they were gonna say he moves at the speed of light. And I was like, oh man, it's gonna be fine. And they're like, no, he moves at the speed of thought. And I was like, what does that even mean? Um, aren't there like the spaceship moves at the speed of thought, too, by the way. Aren't there, like, experiments or, like, theories? I don't really know too much about it, but, like, now about, like, yeah, what's the speed of thought? Is thought faster than whatever, whatever? I don't know. I mean, it can't be faster than light, so... Yeah. Unless we get into some weird quantum theory, but we'll stay away from that for now. <clears throat> no, we'll dive right in. Where do you want to start? <laughs> at the beginning. Cause, right, cause, so cause it, cause, that's the very best place to start. Because <laughs> first there was nothing, right? And then there was light. <laughs> so there's actually a Seventh Doctor audio drama called uh, 1963 The Assassination Games, right? And uh, I'm bringing I thought this... it was Light Strikes Back. No, 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 no. I'm bringing this up for a reason because I've listened to that audio. And in that audio, the Doctor and Ace defeat this... They meet up with the countermeasures team from the Dalek story, and they end up defeating this Illuminati-type um, organization of aliens called The Light. And I, <laughs> I heard Light in the series. I was like, so is this a prequel to that? And I looked it up on the wiki, and apparently they're unrelated. So that's confusing. <clears throat> well, I mean, Light, The Light. Yeah, that one word is really enough to differentiate <laughs> between the two. <laughs> we have the Master and the... Master of the, <laughs> the land of fiction. <laughs> well, what if what if the master of the land of fiction is the master? Kind of like that Maybe. theory that one time that the war chief is also the master. Yeah, maybe. Every renegade time lord ever is the same time lord. Maybe every villain on the show is actually the same person. Maybe every character on this show is actually just... The Doctor. Yeah. I like that theory that the Doctor is every person in the universe because he just keeps regenerating into other people. <laughs> he ends up just populating the entire universe. <clears throat> um, so Ace runs off and almost gets captured by Gwendolyn. This is before she dies, obviously. Yeah, this was a while ago, actually. <laughs> uh, this was back when Josiah wanted to send Ace to Java. <laughs> um, but Ace says no. Says no. She breaks free. She says no this drugs. Is, this is when she um, convinces Control to go against Light. Yes. No. Josiah. Against Josiah. No. Against Both Josiah. Of them. No. None of them. Uh, I don't know. Are you aware you just gave every possible answer to that question? Um, but yeah, Ace reveals that she's the one who burned the thing down um, because... She sensed she Light's was, presence. She was scared, so she burned the house down. And she was pissed that her friend just died. Yes, but also she sensed the evil presence. She specifically says she sensed an evil presence in the house, and that's like 50% of the reason why she burned it down. 
she, yeah, she definitely she, well, uses those is, words like 50% of the reason she why feels really bad down. about burning it down now because she kind of regrets burning down this Victorian mansion and then when she discovers that the reason why she sensed evil was because light disperses himself over the whole mansion the doctor's like do you still feel bad about burning it down and Ace is like no I should have blown it up <laughs> The yeah, kind like of a wicked. weird. Yeah, it was it was a it was kind of weird. That was right at the end, um, because they do some stuff in the spaceship, and what's their names go? Yeah, Fen Cooper just takes over Light's job of cataloging the universe. He's like, "There's so much we gotta catalog. We gotta do everything." <laughs> Those weird alien bug things just kind of blow up in the background. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think like Control snaps her fingers or something, and their heads just blow up in the background it's of like, a shot, and you're like, what, what, like what? The, the shot is focusing on Nimrod, but like in the background, they just blow up. Yeah. It's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, I got double, double take and go back like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Light tries to convince Nimrod to join him because Nimrod used to worship him, and Nimrod's like, yeah, I just found out you're an alien from another planet who's trying to kill all of us, so I'm going to say no. <clears throat> um, yeah. yeah. Man, it ends. Yeah. So, uh... Wicked. <laughs> you know, I don't know what was going on. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> And I mean, yet I somehow it still it, worked. Yeah. Kind of like Greatest Show of the Galaxy. <laughs> really weird. Yeah, but in a more obtuse way. <laughs> it's kind of, uh, kind of absurdist almost. <clears throat> I'm sure there was some deep meaning behind all of this, but uh, yeah, I don't know what it was, nor do I care. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, Mark Platt, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really know um, what to say, to be honest, because it's, <laughs> I don't really know what to talk about, because everything was so confusing. I remember getting halfway through the first episode and already just being horribly, horribly confused. As to nah, episode one was... <clears throat> well, because there was so many... In episode one, the plot itself wasn't confusing, but there was a lot of jump cuts between a lot of different perspectives, and I was like... Yeah, there were a lot of characters introduced right away. I was like, it was kind of like all of it hit you at once, and you're like, whoa, overload. We could mention um, two things. One, Gwendolyn's terrible acting. <laughs> it sucked. Um, they probably just cast her because she can sing and play the piano, to be honest. <laughs> she does that in one scene. We can also mention their huge Victorian sideburns. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's the style for the period. you got to be style-specific, you know. I'm surprised Sabalong Glitz didn't show up <laughs> to the sideburns party. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I don't know. Good sets, good costumes, nifty story. <laughs> what story we could follow anyway? Uh, why was it called Ghost Light? Because he's kind of like a ghost, and he's light. I don't know. Because Ace sensed the ghost of light in the future. Yeah, that, probably, that actually makes the most sense. Probably because it just sounded cool. <laughs> Well, apparently, Nate, uh, John Nathan Turner really disliked Mike Platt's original name for it, so he started um, uh, facetiously what? calling it uh, whatever the original name was, but with the word not in front of it. So it was called, like, the Observatorium or something, and he called it, like, not the Observatorium <laughs> until he came up with a better name. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this was also apparently the final story filmed in all of Classic Who because huh. of uh, the way the production folded out. Um, they shot this last. Wow. Um, interesting. Might have been kind of bittersweet for, uh, for the Doctor Nays. I mean, they just, like, like they said, when they filmed it, they didn't know because they filmed it before the season even aired, so they wouldn't have even known at that point. Like, part of the reason why the show gets canceled is because of those low ratings in the final season, which... Yeah, but I did feel that their acting, for whatever reason, was better in this serial than... Um, it had been before, but maybe it was just because there were more like moments with Ace and the Doctor. Yeah, and the serial actually had to had something to do with Ace's character, so maybe that's just <clears> that. <throat> well, like we said last week, they Doctor well, Sylvester McCoy has nailed down that portrayal, and and they're giving Ace and the Doctor more character moments together, which is something they haven't really done before. <laughs> Ever not, not to this extent <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if, if they have. So, um, yeah. Anything else? No, I'm pretty sure that's it. <laughs> okay, well, um, 
You can email us at thedoctordecadavegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants, love letters, your thoughts on Ghost Light. Please make your thoughts more coherent in the actual plot. Uh, yeah, Mark Platt writes a bunch of audios in the future, one of which I've chosen for uh, our Dark Years adventures. <clears throat> he also writes a lot of books. Um, like Lugbarrow, which is really difficult to find because it was the final book that Virgin published. It costs like $100 if you want to buy a paperback copy on eBay. Nice. And the BBC put a PDF on their website at some point. So, like, maybe we should give more people the opportunity <laughs> to read this thing. And, uh, yeah, you can find us on YouTube, iTunes, and Google Play. All at Trust Your Doctor. Leave a rating if you like the show. Check us out on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor. Like us on Facebook. Also check us out on Twitter, at TYD Podcast. And follow us on Twitter. And next week, we watch The Curse of Fenric. But until then, the end.